Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Last week, one of the big stories was that legendary Apple designer Johnny Ive was joining Sam Altman at OpenAI with an eye to creating a next-generation device for the AI era. Since then, there has been basically nonstop speculation around what the device would actually be. Much of the speculation revolved around the idea of a pendant that would iterate on previous AI devices. Some even thought that Johnny's thick-rimmed glasses for the video were an Easter egg, featuring the device hiding in plain sight. Well, OpenAI staff were given a sneak peek of the design device at a Wednesday meeting. After reviewing a recording of the meeting, the Wall Street Journal wrote, Altman and I have offered a few hints at the secret project they've been working on. The product will be capable of being fully aware of a user's surroundings and will be unobtrusive, able to rest in one's pocket or on one's desk, and will be a third core device a person would put on their desk after a MacBook Pro and an iPhone. Altman reinforced that this is one of the company's largest bets, telling employees that they have, quote, the chance to do the biggest thing we've ever done as a company here. Altman wants to ship 100 million of the AI companions, his word, and also suggested that the $6.5 billion acquisition of the design studio had the potential to add a trillion dollars in value to OpenAI. As for the form factor, Altman said the device won't be a pair of glasses, adding that Ive had been skeptical about building something to be worn on the body. The lack of wearability would sidestep one of the early criticisms of the device. Many pointed out they're not quite ready for a world where every single person is wearing an AI device at all times. Still, Altman is banking on this device being the next big thing. He said, we're not going to ship 100 million devices literally on day one, but he expressed a belief that OpenAI could ship, quote, faster than any company has ever shipped 100 million of something new before. Altman told staff that secrecy is going to be key to ensure the device can get to market before rivals can copy it. And the recording being leaked to the Wall Street Journal raises some pretty big questions about trust at the company and how much Altman will be willing to share at a future all hands. For now, the big takeaway is that it does not look as though we're going to get Humane AI Pin 2.0. Speaking of OpenAI, the company has upgraded their operator agent to use O3. Until now, the web browsing agent has been driven by GPT-4.0, but user preference testing showed that operator O3 had better style, comprehensiveness, and clarity. Users also preferred the upgrade for instruction following, which of course is extremely important when you're letting an agent take over for web-based tasks. Operator O3 also has increased safety. OpenAI claims it's less likely to perform illicit activities, search for personal data, or suffer from a prompt injection attack while browsing the web. OpenAI writes, O3 Operator uses the same multi-layered approach to safety that we use for the 4.0 version of Operator. Compared with other models in the O3 family, O3 Operator was fine-tuned with additional safety data for computer use, including safety data sets designed to teach the models our decision boundaries on confirmations and refusals. Next up, another example of what appears to be the latest trend, which is CEOs using AI avatars on a quarterly earnings call. Last week, we saw Klarna's CEO deliver quarterly earnings via AI avatar, and this week, Zoom CEO Eric Yuan followed suit using an avatar for his initial comments. The avatar said, I'm proud to be among the first CEOs to use an avatar in an earnings call. It's just one example of how Zoom is pushing the boundaries of communication and collaboration. At the same time, we know trust and security are essential. We take AI-generated content seriously and have built in strong safeguards to prevent misuse, protect user identity, and ensure avatars are used responsibly. Now, the Klarna example was clearly just a way for the company to continue to position themselves as an AI-first company. But for Zoom, this was a very public product demo. The company has been working on digital twins for some time, allowing users to send their avatars to meetings. The tech isn't quite ready for real-time use cases, but Zoom is now rolling out avatars for recorded messages to all users. When the real Yuan showed up for the Q&A portion of the call, he commented, I truly love my AI-generated avatar. I think we're going to continue using that. I can tell you I like the experience a lot. Lastly today, Google's antitrust woes continue with a new investigation into their AI acquisition strategy. Bloomberg reports that the Justice Department has launched a probe into Google's deal with Character AI. Last August, Google paid $2.7 billion for a non-exclusive license to use Character AI's technology, and at the same time, it was announced that founder Noam Shazir and several team members would join Google to work on the Gemini team. Shazir had a two-decade career at Google before leaving in frustration in 2021 after the company refused to release his chatbot project. He was one of the lead authors of the Google paper entitled Attention is All You Need, which introduced the transformer architecture that underpins modern AI. The deal was widely reported as an aqua hire, but didn't technically require FTC approval in the same way as an acquisition. A Google spokesperson said the company was, quote, always happy to answer any questions from regulators. However, he pointedly added, we're excited that talent from Character AI has joined the company, but we have no ownership stake and they remain a separate company. The DOJ's position is that they're able to investigate whether the deal is anti-competitive, even if it didn't require a formal review. 
The reporting emphasized that Google hasn't been accused of any wrongdoing, and the investigation is still in the early stages. But I think if you're watching the trend lines, this suggests that the new administration is still actively scrutinizing big tech deals, not just completing antitrust enforcement that began during the last administration. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines edition. Next up, the main episode.